everybody welcome back it's what is today tuesday I'm working from home for a couple hours today i need to hop on a call in a few minutes but i have some code that i've been working on in the office that i thought i saved but apparently i did not i'm trying to save all my new why isn't this turning up hold on about it I actually take their real numbers and explain it to them that way that seems to help and reduce it like the number So that was a, a really good meeting. We got some good information. We're trying to get some things automated or like with reporting automated for our sales employees. And we were going over some of the reporting requirements um, with, I believe it was like an engineer. We were going over the data requirements and she was stating that she doesn't have like the metric information at the level of detail that we needed at in order for it to put into because she would be working to have it put into the system that the sales reps see this reporting they don't have some of the kpis the way that they want it seen so they're going to work that back to see if it's possible to get the metrics split out the way that we need it for the employees to see it in their, like in their systems that way so we can't automate any Anything at this point until we find out whether or not they can get the KPI split and if they can get the KPI split out this way then the pos the potential would be to do it for June but also we have to speak with our director and the other teams like the other stakeholders to align on simplifying these metrics because they're very complicated it's complicated to calculate and, and put in like a tableau dashboard and also just explain how the metric works to employees let alone like trying to get it in a front end system for the employees to see. So that's what we're working with. Like in the meantime, I've been working on my code. I need to do, I need to calculate a metric. So the way that it's currently done is like everything rolls up to the monthly level in the system. So what I need to do is not only see the monthly level, but I also need to see the year to date as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numerator denominator for the metric. And because I also need to see the month, I'm going to partition it. So I'm going to sum over partition by the specific column so that I can get the data the way that I want to see it or that I need to see it because I need to see it both ways. So I need to see the individual monthly calculation, but I also need to see the year to date calculation. So summing over partition by in my code will allow me to do that at the year to date level. So I've been working on that piece of code. So let's get back to that. All right, let's test this out. I'm going to run this piece of code. Oh, I hate I hate that I keep getting disconnected. I don't know why I can't save my password in Tear. And you guys, you should be so proud of me. I'm actually using Tear Data Studio. The only thing I still don't like, hold on. Like if I run into an error, it doesn't tell me. It just does not run. Like what is going on? See, like right now, there's an error somewhere. Something's not computing and it doesn't give me an error. And I'm still trying to figure out where can I find my error log? See, it just doesn't tell you. It says two errors over here. What are the errors? Okay, what time was this error? Error computing at 11.26 a.m. It's three o'clock. Where are the errors from? Why isn't it running currently? <sighs> I swear this is gonna drive me crazy. Why? Okay, let me comment this out and see if it'll run. Okay, some 24137. Okay, and then 5420. Okay, so that's right. Then why can't I get, why isn't this working? Okay, 
Let's see. Is it my group buy? Okay. Okay, I'm go I'm gonna resort to going to the old tarot data just so I can find out what the era is because I really don't know what it is. Alright, let's see. Does it give me an era? Ugh. Year to date. Year to date sales. The column's not found? What do you mean? That these are aliased out. It's because I got two columns with the same name. Some things are not immediately obvious to you. So that piece matches. Okay, let me go back and adjust my code. So I got two columns with the same name. I needed to adjust the name because it's duplicate column name. So I don't know why it couldn't just give me an error. Like these ambiguous error messages, I swear, will be the death. Okay, and then I need to take, what is it? The months. So if I count this. Let me take the data out the database and see if my math is right. Like, is my math wrong or is... I'm trying to understand what part of the calculation is wrong. So I'm going to paste it into an Excel file and do my calculations manually and see. So if I do equals... Sum. Oh no, I know what it is. I am including a month that's not... Okay, for... Okay, you know what? I think I know what it might be. I'm including May performance, and this is only looking at data through April. So I think that's why my numbers aren't matching this. No. That's what it is. I'm including May performance, and this is not. The other data is not. So, okay, I need to do a calculation for the month, and then I should be good. So I'm going to end it here for today. I'll check back in with you next time. Thursday so today I don't know what I'm doing like and I, I just know I need to work on some dashboards I, I believe that's probably the main thing I'll be doing all day not anything exciting like it becomes like redundant I apologize well not apologize but I <laughs> understand that these vlogs may seem boring but a lot of the times you're doing the same thing over and over again but probably just on j different projects but I'm still working on another iteration of a dashboard I believe I need to also pick back up and work on my code some yesterday I got um I was helping someone else out on my team and while we were in the office and we were going through I was showing her how to update a slide for a deck and where to pull the data that type of thing so I spent my time doing that I also spent some time working on this dashboard when I got home that may be in this vlog I don't know but that's what I spent my time doing and that's what I need to do today I need to work on a dashboard and I also need to do some that's what I was doing some validations with some code I was running it trying to get my numbers to match what someone else has in their report because we just need to check to make sure we have the same like we we're using the same logic when we're calculating the metrics so and they asked us to do some validations to make sure everything looks correct so I was doing that but the issue y'all I'm trying to use Teradata Studio however the one issue that I have is that like if a piece of code like a piece of code wouldn't run because I didn't have like the first I, I did not see that I didn't enter like the first letter in the table name and in Teradata um what is it called? Teradata SQL Assistant? In Teradata SQL Assistant, the old version that's no longer supported, if I tried to run code with a letter missing off of the table name, it would tell me and give me an error. I, or at least be in red or something, you know, like I'll have like a red under, it does not do that in Teradata Studio. So what I'm having to do is I was running it in Teradata Studio and I wasn't getting an error message, although a letter was missing, like the table, like it should have gave me something like this table doesn't exist or this data 
database doesn't exist. Well, it was not the table name. It was the database name. So I have to put the database name dot the table name from that database. So a letter was missing from the database name and I was trying to run it and it was not giving me an error message or anything. So I'm just like, why aren't you running the code? Because honestly, you become blind to these things when you have so many lines of code like you're going through looking and you're like everything looks right like you can overlook just a simple letter missing so I need the system to tell me hey like the database doesn't exist the table doesn't exist give me some kind of freaking error message and it wasn't giving me an error message even when I go to the error log it did not show anything so I was trying to google search and find out why it's not doing that like why isn't that functionality in Teradata Studio because it was in Teradata SQL Assistant. So I still need to look into that. So I think I want to search that first while I also am running some reports in the background and then we'll I'll pop back in and check in with you guys while I'm doing that. And if you know like if you use Teradata Studio like if you're in your job and you've run into this issue and you know how to solve it please let me know because I feel like like am I slow am I dumb like am I missing something like it might be something super simple and I'm just not it's not clicking where do I see it so let me look into that of this meeting can someone please come on are we still having this call can you hear me am i muted oh she's on another call okay got it okay hold on one second oh so that's where the mark okay mm -hmm. okay we'll send it to me okay no you're yeah hey i just no, you can go ahead. There is a fix scheduled for May 29th to go in, and there is one that's going to restate the historical data, but that one they don't have a date for. So the fix that's going in May 29th is to fix whatever caused that issue with the missing data to begin with. That's not scheduled for May 29th, is my understanding from the email. And then the second part to that is the attempt to restore the missing data. There's not a date for that, and I think that's what he's supposed to provide today, or whenever they confirm so we don't I, I mean based on how we're seeing performance continue to trend out it doesn't look like it's a lot of missing data that's going to make a difference in these numbers to me like you guys can look at it and tell see otherwise but I don't think it's going to make a significant impact to bring up like bring performance back to what it was before no no yeah I don't think so either right and it's and it's because of 80 something thousand So we have another call. This should be the last call of the day. And then I'm gonna take lunch, come back and continue to work on my dashboard a little bit more. I think I'm making some progress. Hopefully this is a short call. Okay, you guys, so I'm back from lunch. I am just doing a response to a Slack message from my team. But I've been back for a while now. I just have been working on my dashboard. It's I'm trying to figure out the best way to show the calculations for this. I'm choosing correctly because there's so many different ways that you can show a calculation. So the way that it's currently breaking out is that I have like three different um, performance tiers and within each tier I'm trying to show the breakout of like the performance percentage. So you can calculate it, you can do the calculated field in Tableau, you can base it on like a um, another metric. Does that make sense? 
So like if I have a market and I want to show the breakout of a specific market, like the percentage breakout, kind of like that. So maybe this will be a better explanation. So you know how in, um, and if I can show this in a pop-up, I'll, I'll overlay a screen recording of this, but you know that in, or maybe you don't, but in within Excel, you can create calculated fields when you're doing like your pivot tables and whatnot. And within that, you can have your values summarized by like the parent row, the grand total, the a percent of like the column. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. I think it's still supposed we are supposed to finalize recording tomorrow to my knowledge. If something changes, um All right, so yeah. So, as I was saying, so within Excel, when you do a calculated field, you can summon your you can summarize your values as a percent of the grand total as a per, like which is like the overall total. It usually makes the percentages look lower when you do that. You can have it as a percent of your parent row total. So you can kind of do that same kind of thing within Tableau as well. It's not called the same thing, but that's pretty much what you're choosing to do when you do your calculations. Um, so you can have it summarized by a specific field breakout and that's that's what I'm doing. So there is a market. I'm having it to break it out by market. If that does that make sense? Like my my I'm having it to compute the calculation based on the market calculation. And I'm just checking that against other options to make sure that's the best way to showcase it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, are they called filter actions, set actions filter action I I think it's a filter action where and if the name is wrong I will correct it I'll put it up what it's actually called but I have one chart that has the tiered breakout breakout but when you click on the filter action so like if you click on a piece of that chart it will change the view of what you see in the other charts on that same dashboard page so I want to make sure that to the end user when they click on something that the percentage breakout that it shows in the other chart when it recalculates everything that it makes sense sorry it took me so long to explain that so one chart is controlling the view of the other charts on the on the dashboard and i just want to make sure that the calculations that i'm using make sense so i'm gonna have someone else look at it eventually but i just wanted to that's what I've been working on for like the last hour, making sure that looks right and makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. And then also addressing some questions about reporting being finalized tomorrow. And then the issue, so the the missing data issue. So I don't think we've gotten an updated email today, but yesterday we got an email from my old, someone, he was my old manager. He sent out an email yesterday saying that the data source issue, they are putting in a fix. So it doesn't seem like, it looks like it only affected a few days at the beginning of May, but they're not sure. So they're putting in a fix to correct it going forward. And that's supposed to be put in next week. However, they are also thinking that, well, not thinking that, but they're also supposed to put in a fix to recover those days of missing data um, for this metric we discussed previously. So they're supposed to be putting in a fix. He said today, but he would let us know for sure if it's going to be today and we haven't heard back from him yet that it's going to be today they're supposed to be able to try and start recovering the data for the days that were missing fingers crossed that they're actually able to recover the data for the days missing then we if that's the case we can you know restate and see what the impact was on on like the metric performance looking at the days like looking at like the daily run rate for days not including those that we believe were impacted and again there is a pot there's a a small possibility that other days of performance could have been impacted with this or we just don't know but we'll be able to see i've been keeping the historical reporting for it for the metric to see so we can compare okay this is where we were with those days missing and then once they give us confirmation that the fix went in and all of the days have been recovered then we can go in and check and see what the impact was there luckily in sales performance doesn't get finalized until the following month so we have time before may performance gets finalized that's the only good part about it like yes the data's missing but if they're able to recover it we have we will have time to validate check those corrections and go forward so there's that 
All right, so I'm gonna get back to working on my dashboard and I will probably check in with you guys again tomorrow.